is my daily bread This is my i 
<laughs> well, good morning. How are you this morning? It's good to see you. I'm happy that you're here, and uh, uh, I'd say it's nice to see your smiling faces, but I can't see your smiling faces. <laughs> Elizabeth said there's two things that she hates about masks. She hates the fact, because Elizabeth reads lips a little bit. When, well, we all do. We just don't even realize we're doing it, but when somebody talks to us, we kind of read their lips a little bit, and she said, you can't read lips, and she said, nobody can see my lipstick. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, let's begin with a word of prayer. How about? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house today. Thank you, Father, for your word and the preciousness of it to it, that, that it, 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 the precious place that it plays in our lives. And Father, thank you for just meeting with us here now. Thank you that we know that as we come in your presence, whether we're here in church, whether we're at our homes, whether we're sitting out in the parking lot, whether we're at work, wherever we're at, you're always there. You're omnipresent. And Father, we thank you for that. And we thank you that we can just uh, revel in the fact that even that, that here this morning, that you are here with us. And Father, we pray that you'll just bless the service today. Bless it to your name's glory. Father, just guide us in all that we do and say and help us to honor you through this day. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Sue, we're going to start with a hymn. Um, we've been starting a lot with some recorded music, but this morning is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and you can't hardly get through... And I don't have that number written down. Do you know what it is, Sue? Count your blessings. Let me find it real quick. There it is. It's 786. 786. Should have put that in the bulletin. 786. And, you know, I'll tell you what. I've learned, and you have too. All of you have. Whether you're watching at home or whether you're, watching, whether you're listening out in the parking lot or wherever you're at, we've all learned 
that doesn't matter how bad things get, if we'll just take the time to start thinking about the blessings that God has given us, and all you know, and we all have them, don't we? If we just stop and, and think about that, and think about how good God has been to us in so many ways, uh, we really it just brings some joy to your face. Uh, I was I was driving home. My favorite non-Christian song is "It's a Wonderful World," but Louis Armstrong's got to be singing it. It's just, to me, it's the happiest song that was ever written. And I was going along the other day in the car, and that song came on. And I just couldn't help but smile. And I started singing. I can't sing like Louis Armstrong, but I just started singing along with it. And, you know, when we just start thinking about all the blessings that we have, yes, there's a lot of problems. But we have a lot of blessings, and we need to take the time to count those blessings. Let's stand together, why don't we, as we sing hymn number 786. Actually, you don't have to turn to your books. It should be up on the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. When upon life's billows we are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them. <laughs> Count your many blessings, see what God has done has done are you ever burdened with a load of care does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear count your many blessings every doubt will fly and you will be singing as the days go by count your blessings name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy Your reward in heaven or your home on high Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God hath done Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Health and comfort. <coughs> Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. You may be seated. I love that last verse. I'd never thought about it. You know, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a tickle right here been drinking iced tea, and it's making my throat dry. Anyhow, that last verse says, So amid the conflict, whether great or small. Right now, we're faced with all kind of conflict in our world, aren't we? So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. I don't know what the songwriter might have gone through. But the truth is still there. Do not be discouraged. God is over all. What a powerful message that we need to keep in mind. All right. I want to take care of a couple of announcements this morning. Um, we'll get to prayer requests in a minute. So if you have prayer requests, 
and you're watching online today and you want to send those through the comment section, you can do that and we'll get those um, and, uh, and we'll go that route. Um, this Sunday, Children's Church in the basement and we're doing all the stuff that we've been doing, social distancing and hand sanitizing and all the stuff that we're doing. Um, online Bible study Tuesday evening, we're back to Tuesday. And for those that tried to, <laughs> I didn't get the message to that tried to sign in on Tuesday and didn't get the message that we had moved it to Thursday, I apologize. And then Thursday got all messed up and uh, I had an emergency and so I didn't get to do it Thursday either. But anyhow, we will be back on track this Tuesday. New Daily Breads are in the back and uh, feel free to pick one of those up if you don't have a regular devotional that you're using right now, I highly recommend the Daily Breads. They're easy to use. They have great content. Um, just, a, just a wonderful thing. So uh, keep the Daily Bread in mind. Then uh, this Tuesday, I need help. Thank you, buddy. You're right, Wednesday. Why do I have Tuesday down on this? Oops. Wednesday. 6:30. I need some help decorating the church. We got the tree to put up and all the Christmas decorations to put up and I got to dig that tree out of the shed out here and it's covered up with yard sale stuff. Normally we've had our yard sale by now and so it's easy to get to. Now it's buried. So I got to unbury it, get all the stuff from upstairs, and bring it down. And it's just too much for Camille and I to do. So need some help. Uh, if you're willing to come this, thir this Wednesday at 6.30 uh, to help put up Christmas decorations, it would be greatly appreciated. We're still going to celebrate Christmas. Um, continue with the drive-in services and so forth. We just continue to do that. And we're continuing for now to ask you to wear masks during the service. Uh, until the numbers start, you know, get back down a little bit and things start, you know. We're really praying. There's a lot of promise that's being shown in a lot of the um, vaccinations. Uh, I think the one that Pfizer has out is like 94% effective with no side effects so far. A um, couple others that are around 90%. So we're just hoping, you know, that before too long, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's, that's our hope and prayer, and we're going to continue to pray to that end. But for now, we, need, we do need to protect one another, and so we're asking you to wear the masks, and I appreciate your understanding in that. Um, I would say, somebody asked me the other day, um, I can't, they said, I can't breathe in a mask. Could I wear a shield? And the whole idea is it keeps the, whatever's coming out of your mouth from just spreading over. So if you want to wear the shield... A lot of places do that, and that's, Sandy told me that's also acceptable. So if that's easier for you, that's fine. <clears throat> um, we've already, you know, we've, we've talked about our tithes and offerings many times, and I thank you for all that you do there and the way you've kept the church going well. I'm um, going to the next one. I wanted to let you know, Operation Christmas Child... We collected 111 boxes, and I was blown away by that. Considering the circumstances and how everything's going, I just did not expect to see that many boxes. But we collected 111 boxes, and so I want to say thank you very much. What a blessing. Um, something else got coming up for you that I hope you'll enjoy. It'll be on Sunday morning, December the 6th at break, regular Sunday morning service. We're going to have the group Rest Westward Road here. And they're going to be doing a Christmas concert for us. They will stay up here masked. You will be out there. Uh, hopefully we can use all of our empty pews that are, you know, with family groups. We're going to limit it. You know, if we start getting too crowded, we'll have to tell people. We're going to have it set up so people in the parking lot can also hear through the FM transmitter. We're going to broadcast it. But uh, they're going to be here and they're going to do a Christmas concert for us. And I'm just excited about that. And so... I uh, hope that you'll come and, and enjoy that. I'm looking forward to it. We're not going to promote this out around town because we have to limit how many people come in here and how much room we have. So this is going to be for our church. That's not saying you can't tell a friend. That's not, you know, I'm not saying you can't tell a friend about this. Um, am I moving around too much on you? I'm sorry. 
but uh, you, you know, you can tell a friend and bring a friend. We have a lot of of pews that are are open pews that are empty, so there's still room for people to come. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, you're welcome to bring somebody to that. And uh, I look forward to it. I, I think it's going to be a blessing. They've really, all of the gospel groups and all of the singing groups and all of the, you know, they've just been shut down for so long. And they're really struggling as well. So I'm really, they're looking forward to being here and we're looking forward to having them. Any other announcements that <coughs> anybody is aware of? All right. We'll take a minute for prayer requests. Looks like we have some coming from online. Thank you, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, Tom Poston is in need of our prayers. That's Tina's, um, that's Tina's dad. And he's just been, he's just been, he's got pneumonia. He doesn't have COVID, but he has pneumonia and he's really struggling with that. And so he needs our prayers. Um, Camille is doing better. She doesn't feel like she could come yet today because she's still got a cough, but she hasn't had any fever. She's back to eating, um, and she's she's doing much better. She was out hanging Christmas lights yesterday and feeling good, and so uh, we're thankful for that. Um, yes, Brenda? Sonny Maori family. Okay. Tom Dolly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Family of Derek Delaney, okay? Also, Carolyn Alt and Paige Mungold. And who is the family? Gary and Chelsea Walls. Um, they had a fire Wednesday and uh, pretty significant loss. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking into it and seeing what we can do to help them. Um, so keep this family in mind. Others? Yes? Everybody's safety in the woods this week during deer season. Yep. Yep. I saw a big old buck coming down 20, 220 this morning. He was standing there just looking at me, horns out like that. I said, where are you at whenever I'm looking for you? Never have seen one of those whenever I was looking for him. Huh? They all leave tonight. They go, they just disappear. Yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wonderful to hear. Thank you. Any other praise reports? Michelle Dolly's dad. Okay. You know, we just sang count your blessings. Any anything that any blessings we need to count this morning? Any words of praise? Caught you, didn't I? Caught you flat footed. Didn't give you a warning. I never would have I never would have guessed that. No. I can see you smiling even behind that mask. Thankful for your granddaughter. She's holding her little baby granddaughter. Yes. Any other words of praise or words of thanksgiving this morning? Oh, my goodness. You guys have had a rough time. What? God's in control. God's in control. I'm so glad he is and not me. Who said amen? <laughs> You're right to say Amen. All right, well, we all have more blessings than we can count if we take the time to do it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to just this morning come before you with burdens that are on our hearts, concerns that are on our minds. Father, there are spoken requests, and I'm sure, Father, there are unspoken requests. I messed up and didn't ask for unspoken requests again. But, Lord, I have no doubt that this room is filled with people who would raise their hands over unspoken requests this morning. And you know what they are. They don't need to even raise their hand for you to know that they have this request on their heart. And so, Father, we come to you this morning 
thankful that we're able to bring these needs to you. Thankful that you hear and care about our prayers. Thankful, Father, that we can just come to you and know that, that Lord, you have the answers that we seek. So, Father, as we come to you this morning, whether we're lifting up individuals who are dealing with sorrow at a loss, a family that is dealing with a loss due to fire and trying to figure out how to put their lives back together, <clears throat> whatever the need might be, whether, that, whether it involves illness or whether it involves struggle of some other kind, Father, we just thank you that we can bring these to you and that we can, that we can recognize that you do have the answers that we're looking for. So, Father, bless our time together here today, but, Father, even more importantly, hear our prayer and meet these individuals at their point of need. And, Father, we'll not fail to give you praise for it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue by singing a chorus that, to me, just is so thanksgiving-minded. And it's just the chorus, Give Thanks. And... Uh, you know, I really believe, and I want you to hear me on this, I really believe that so much of the Christian life is about attitude. So much of the Christian life is about where I have my focus and whether my attitude is focused on God and His glory and glorifying Him or whether, whether I'm focused on myself and my attitude is negative and sour and everything else. Attitude is a choice. Attitude is based on what my focus is on. And I really believe that attitude is so important in the Christian life. So we're going to sing the song. You can remain seated. We're going to sing the song, Give Thanks. You can sing along with it. You can listen to it. You can pray during it. Whatever God says to you, but listen or, or participate as we do the song, Give Thanks.
from what is without a doubt the most well-known psalm in the Bible. 23rd Psalm. We're just going to read that together. And if you want, you're welcome to read it aloud with me, but I want to read it for you. So, Psalm 23, beginning in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Heavenly Father, just one final time as we come before you, before the message. Father, you know my heart better than I know it myself. And Father, I know that for me to stand here and try to share your word apart from your Holy Spirit's power and direction, I know is a waste of everybody's time. So Father, I come to you this morning as best I know how, asking your forgiveness for where I've sinned and come short of your glory. Asking that you hear me, and Father, asking that I be allowed to yield myself to you the best that I can. Father, move me aside that your word can come forth as you desire it to come forth. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my mom's favorite stories of when I was a little kid, I don't know how many times I've heard her tell this story, but when I was a little kid, about three years old, I walked into where she was at and I said, Mommy, you need to sit down. I've got a problem. And I don't remember what the problem was. I don't remember, and I don't remember that mom says she doesn't know what the problem was, but mom says she remembers thinking that she hoped that whatever the problem of this three-year-old child was, that it was the biggest problem that I would ever have to face. Well, of course, that wasn't the case. <laughs> but the truth is we all face problems. We all face struggles, whether we're 3 or 33 or 103. We face problems. I was driving down the road, and I thought of what I have to be thankful for. I was trying to think about what I could preach on for Thanksgiving that I hadn't already preached on half a dozen times. I didn't want to do more of just the same. I thought about the blessings I've experienced even this year and how many of them we take for granted. But then I thought, no, I've preached on that too many times. Then I thought of the first Thanksgiving service. No, I wasn't there at that service, Elizabeth. The first Thanksgiving meal. I thought about it. I thought about what prompted it. The pilgrims had made it through the first winter. They were preparing for their second winter. They'd faced hardships unlike any of us will probably ever face in this lifetime. Half of them died in that first year. Yes, they enjoyed a prosper, yet, yet after all that had happened, they had enjoyed a prosperous growing season and they were getting ready to move into the next winter and be prepared for that. They'd suffered much, but in the end they realized that God had been with them through it all. And they wanted to give him thanks for being with them, for walking with them, through what may have been the biggest struggles of their lives. As I thought back over this past year, I thought of the struggles, and there have been plenty, haven't there? We've had many things that we've had to endure. COVID has completely changed our lives. It's completely changed the way we worship. As many of you can attest to that are watching online or listening out in the parking lot, or are sitting in this room with a mask on your face. We've had a lot of struggles. A lot of things have changed. 
Some people have faced tremendous loss. Darkness seemed to surround us. And it did all of us. There were days that I just didn't even feel like getting up and leaving the house. But I wasn't about to let myself give in to that. We look around and we saw great losses that others were experiencing. And new struggles that seemed to be looming just over the horizon. More than one time I fell on my knees before God and asked Him for strength and asked Him to protect our land and protect our country and protect the people I love and help during this, tri time of this trying time. And you know what I found when I did that? You know what I found when I fell on my knees before God and, and begged Him for His guidance and His help? You know what I found? I found He was there. I found He was there. We can give God thanks for a lot of reasons. The first reason I want to remind you of this morning that as you approach Thanksgiving or even here today, as you approach your time with God, the first thing I want you to think about that we can give thanks for is that He understands our struggles. One of the greatest images of God is that of a shepherd. A good shepherd understands the needs of his flock and even the needs of the individual sheep of his flock. He knows which one's hurting. He knows why they're hurting. He knows what they're going through. He recognizes their cries of hunger. He recognizes their cries of distress or fear. He hears their sounds of, of joy and contentment and he knows all of those different sounds. When I was in Africa, I came to understand more about the role of shepherd than I ever had. I just happened to be in a village one morning when the shepherd came to the village and he let out a cry, <clears throat> just a just a, a, a cry that he had developed that was his own cry. And while I'm standing there in the village, all of a sudden, from every corner of the village, these sheep come running, sheep and goats come running, and they're running down the path and they're running to the shepherd. They knew his voice. And he knew which ones were healthy and happy, and he knew which ones were hurting and needing, needing a little more attention. He knew which ones were going to be the last ones, the slow ones. He knew which ones he needed to give special care to that were real frisky, that might try to wander off. He knew everything about every one of them. And after he had them all gathered up together and they stood around him, he turned and began to walk and they all followed. He understands. God understands. And he understands because he's been through it himself. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 3, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. And I like the way the CEV put it, the contemporary English version put it this way. He was hated and rejected. His life was filled with sorrow and terrible suffering. No one wanted to look at him. We despised him and said he is, nobody, is a nobody. Jesus understands our hurting. He understands what it is to be without. He understands what it is to go without. He understands what it is to, to be turned on by people. He understands what physical suffering is. He understands suffering on a level that none of us have ever experienced. He understands our suffering. He knows what it is to experience great loss. But thankfully, he also knows what it is to experience great joy. The second thing that I want you to understand is that he is present during our struggles. The psalm writer in Psalm 46 verse 1 said, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. I love those words. And ever present help in trouble. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter who's around me. It doesn't matter whether I'm in church or whether I'm standing on a street corner in Petersburg. It doesn't matter where I am. God is ever present. Sometimes we don't acknowledge that. Sometimes we don't even, we're not aware of the fact that wherever I'm at, somebody the other day, I was with a person and she has a bad mouth. And she was struggling and, and, and about, you know, she'd be saying something and she'd rip off some cuss words and, and she'd, oh, I got to learn how to talk when I'm around you. 
And I'm like, well, you know what? Whether I'm here or not, God is here. Whether I'm standing here or not, God hears what you say and hears what you do and sees what you think. It doesn't matter whether I'm here or not. Don't use God's name in vain. He's always here. After Hudson Taylor's son and a few days later his wife passed away, he wrote in his journal, I cannot describe to you my feelings. I do not understand them myself. I feel like a person stunned with a blow or recovering from a faint. And yet, and as yet, but partially conscious. My father has ordered it so. Therefore, I know it is. It must be best. And I thank him for so ordering it. Yet I feel utterly crushed. Oftentimes my heart is nigh to breaking. But with all I had almost but with all I had almost said I never knew what peace and happiness were before. So much have I enjoyed in the very sorrow that I endure. As he lost his son and his his wife, he just turned to God. He just went to God. And he said, even in the midst of my sorrow, even in the midst of my heartbreak, I understand peace, I understand joy, I understand contentment and happiness in a way that I never have before because I'm dwelling in the presence of God. I'm aware of His presence. No, it doesn't make it all right. It doesn't make the things that happened good. But understand that when we live in an awareness of the presence of God, David said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. There is a place of joy and peace and contentment in the presence of God when we are dwelling in that presence. We can give thanks because of His presence. David said in Psalm 23 in the the passage we read, You are with me. You are with me. David said, I know you're here. I'm thankful during the past year. It didn't matter what we had to face. It didn't matter how frightened I was at the circumstances. It didn't matter how many things, how many things just seemed to go go crazy and go bad, whether it was a crazy election or whether it was a crazy situation with COVID or what all was going on. God was right there with me, constantly standing by my side and yours. And I don't want to move from that. He carried me. For that alone, I owe him thanks. The third thing is he gives strength through my struggles. In Exodus chapter 52, or 15 verse 2, it says, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my, God, my, father, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Psalm 18.2 said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him and I am helped. Therefore my heart rejoices greatly. And with my song I will praise Him. These are just a few of the verses. It tells us that one of the great things that God does for us and that we should be thankful for is that God strengthens us when we need it the most. There's a German pastor by the name of Martin Reinhardt. Reinhardt, Reinhardt, Reinhardt. He served in the town of Ellenburg during the horrors of the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648. Ellenburg became an overcrowded refugee city. And because of the overcrowding, and all the fugitives that came there from all away, all around, trying to get away from the, from the war. Famine fell on the city, and pestilence fell on the city. An epidemic soon fell on the city at the beginning of 1637. There were four ministers in the town of Ellenburg. One of them took off to a safer place. The other two, Pastor Reinhardt, preached their funerals as they succumbed to the illness. 
As the only pastor left in the town, he often conducted as many as 40 or 50 funerals a day because of the, the epidemic that was in the town. All in all, he preached 4,480 funerals during his time there. In May of that year, his own wife died. By the end of the year, the refugees had to be buried in trenches without services because there were too many. Yet living in a world dominated by death, this amazing pastor wrote the following prayer for his children to offer to the Lord. And here's what it said. Listen to these words and think about the circumstances that he's writing this in. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath led us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. I don't know what struggles you've been through in this past year. We've all shared the struggle of changed lives because of COVID. But I can tell you this. You're a child of God and you're not alone. God is with us and gives us strength through our trials. God will give you the strength you need for the struggles you face. And for that, you can be thankful. Fourthly, he provides comfort in the midst of our struggles. Our world right now is a frightening place. Many of the struggles that people face carry potential disaster with them. We live in a world where lawsuits threaten, jobs no longer have security, marriages are no longer looked at as something that, some, that should be something of permanence. As a result, people are stressed and frightened. COVID seems to be affecting our lives at every hand. But I want you to understand that Christ brings comfort in the midst of these conditions. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod was a picture of protection. The staff was a picture of guidance. I read about a three-year-old who accidentally spilled fruit punch on the floor. And he wanted to clean it up. So he's going to run out to the back porch and get the mop that's on the back porch, just outside the door. But as he gets to the back door, he realized it's dark out there. And he's afraid of the dark. So he gets to the back door and he just stops. And his mom said, honey, Jesus is everywhere. He's even out there in the dark. And the little boy stood there for a minute he stuck his head up next to the door and said, Jesus, if you're out there, would you please hand me the mop? He's there. John 16, Jesus said, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. What an amazing promise. Sometimes that peace and comfort may come in very unexpected ways. It's not always the way you would envision it. Sometimes they're struggling. But in the end, we find a resolve in itself. We, we don't always understand where our, where our help is going to come from. I read about a nine-year-old boy. I'm reading about a lot of kids this week. I read about a nine-year-old boy who was sitting in class. And all of a sudden, he's sitting there in class, and all of a sudden, a puddle forms on the floor between his legs and his pants are wet and he's terrified he knows that in just a couple minutes the rest of the boys in the class are going to see it and they're going to ridicule him and make fun of him and the girls in the class are going to hate him and not want anything to do with him and he's just mortified and he bows, he bows his head in prayer and says God I need help now Jesus I need help now in a minute it's going to be too late I'm going to be caught in a disaster he, sees, he, he lifts his head up and he sees the teacher walking toward him and she's seen what's happened and he knows in just a second he's going to be found out. 
And about that time, a little girl by the name of Susie is carrying a fishbowl, and she happens to be walking past him, and she stumbles and trips and dumps the whole fishbowl right in his lap. <laughs> He's covered in the water from the fishbowl. The teacher comes, and she takes him out and gets him some dry gym clothes while his pants dry. And when they get back in the room, he looks at, before he leaves, he looks over at Susie because he knew he looked at her and he could tell by the look in her face that she had done it on purpose. She had saw what was going on. And he looked over at her and said, thank you. He comes back in the classroom and the kids are down cleaning up the mess on the floor. And Susie wants to help, but now the, instead of him being ridiculed, Susie is being ridiculed. And when Susie tried to help, the kids push her away and said, you've done enough already. Just get out of here. You've done enough already. He feels terrible that she's being treated this way. And so at the bus stop that night, he goes over after or that evening, he goes over to her and he said, you did that on purpose because you knew what had happened. And she looked at him and said, that's okay. She said, I wet my pants one time too. He said, it'll be okay. You know, we don't, we don't always know where help's going to come from. But understand this, God provides comfort in the midst of our struggles. He restore, lastly, He restores me after the struggle. This is the picture in Psalm 23. It's, it's about one who is well fed and well rested and restored after food and rest and, and, and they, they're setting in a calming location. This is the picture of spiritual restoration that you can find in Jesus Christ. Somebody pictured this as a bike tire. You know, bike tires have a way of, after they sit for a while, they just deflate all by themselves, it seems. The air just goes out. We don't know where it goes, but the air just goes out of them. You can't ride a bike very good on a flat tire. Our lives also have a way of deflating themselves through, because of difficult situations, difficult conversations that we get involved in, and all of a sudden, some air goes out of our lives. We have a tough day at work and a little more air goes out of our lives. We're, we're overwhelmed by circumstances. A little more air goes out of our lives. We get the news that somebody we worked with tested positive for COVID or we test positive for COVID and a little more air goes out of our lives. We end, up, we end up deflating and it happens to all of us. So where in my life am I being reinflated? Where am I pausing long enough to refill my tire? I know for me when it happens, I get off by myself and spend time listening to worship music or spend time all by myself with my Bible or let God speak to me as I spend time in prayer. When I got the word that my dad had been taken to the hospital with covid that his O2 sats were down to 82, I was scared. I thought, the virus is in his lungs. It's already attacking his lungs. Dad's 90 years old. He's got a heart condition. He's got a diabetic condition. And I was frightened. And I remember just getting alone by myself, pulling off the side of the road, being so overwhelmed with fear that just pulling off by the side of the road and bowing my head and beginning to pray and telling God, God, I know he's 90. And I know I've had him for a long time. But please, God, this time, please, one more time, heal him. He went home this week. He's okay. Now listen, I know there's going to come a day when that prayer is not going to be answered the way I want it to be answered. Many of you have already experienced that. And God doesn't answer every prayer the way we want answered. But what I felt most in that time of prayer was not a confidence that God was going to answer the prayer that I wanted answer the prayer the way I wanted him to answer it, it was that God was with me. God was there and he was in control and he was on the throne. And I didn't need to worry. I just needed to put it in his hands. 
I didn't know how it was going to be answered. But I knew God was on the job. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what chaos your life is going through right now. And all of our lives are going through a little bit of chaos. It doesn't matter how far those struggles may have deflated you. God can and will, if you permit, bring restoration to your spirit and give you what you need to endure. This past year has been difficult for almost everybody in this room. Some of you have lost dear friends or loved ones. There's been struggles with illness. There's been worries over financial loss. And we've seen relationships strained. To go through these and other struggles have overwhelmed a lot of people. The fact is, we don't have to think these, face these alone. Thanksgiving, this is why Thanksgiving was established. Those early pilgrims had suffered much and struggled through incredible circumstances. They made seven times more graves than they made huts to live in. Nevertheless, they set aside a day for thanksgiving. They realized they weren't alone. They realized that God was with them along the way and understood their needs and was giving strength and comfort and restoration to their spirits and vitality to their lives to meet the challenge. That was the reason they gave thanks that first day and the reason that David wrote the 23rd Psalm. The reason for those events hasn't changed. God is still there. He's still with us in our struggles. He's still there being our shepherd and our guide. Providing strength and restoration for our lives. So that in so many ways and so many other reasons on coming, all of these things come together so that we have reason to be thankful on Thanksgiving Day. And we truly can give thanks because God is there. And because of all of the reasons that I've mentioned. It doesn't mean that we give thanks on Thanksgiving Day just because everything is going the way we want it to go. It doesn't mean we give thanks on Thanksgiving Day just because we've received a bunch of blessings. It means we give thanks because God walks with us every step of the way. One of these days... All of this stuff that's around the coronavirus will be gone. But there'll be another struggle. may not be a virus, but there'll be some other kind of crazy struggle going on. I was reading, I was reading, many of you know I take care of my Uncle Richard's affairs now that Tracy's gone. And I was looking through some papers. My Aunt Charlotte saved everything. And I was looking through some papers and I found where she had saved his high school graduation program. 1944. And when I opened it up and I looked in that program, I wish I'd have brought it with me today. It had several students giving addresses. But when you looked at the addresses they were giving... It was something like things like industry during the post-war era. The struggles of the UN during the post-war era. Job opportunities in a post-war economy. There was like six different addresses that dealt with post-war conditions. World War II was raging. It hadn't quite come to an end yet. They were hoping it was going to come to an end, but Uncle Richard ended up going to Germany. Their lives were consumed in 1944 with how is this war going to change our world and our lives? This war that was consuming the whole world. As human beings, we are very adept at finding struggles. They're always going to be a part of our lives. But hear me on this. Regardless of the struggles that you face, this Thanksgiving, you can be thankful. Because God 
walks through those struggles with you and will restore you and will strengthen you and will help you and will guide you. And he deserves our thanks for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, to say the words thank you seems so insignificant. But Father, know the spirit that we say them in. From the depths of our heart, we thank you that you walk, through, walk with us through these struggles. We thank you, Father, that we can trust you in the midst of our trials. We thank you, Father, that we know that you're with us through the coronavirus, through job struggles, through work struggles, through business struggles, through family struggles, through health struggles. You're there in every situation and you understand the situation. And you have a way of giving strength and help and reigniting and reinflating our spirits as we look to you. Father, this morning, let us truly be thankful for all that you've done. Pray in Jesus' name. We're going to sing a song from our hymnals. Well, it'll be on the screen. It's an old song called Thank You, Lord. And Sue, do you know this one? If not, we'll just do it a cappella. It's uh, number 513. Um, I shouldn't do this. I spring stuff on Sue, and that's not fair to her. Um, but she's always so... She, i tell you what. This lady's crown is going to be so much bigger than mine in heaven. You know, I'm going to have this little shed off to the side, and she's going to have this mansion because she's got to be the sweetest, most giving person I know. And she just uh, doesn't matter what you spring on her. She just always does it with a smile. Are we okay with that one? Or Let's just sing it a cappella. We can do that. I'll tell you what. Let's stand together, okay? This is, this is just sort of a chorus. It's just sort of a chorus, and it's, it's just a good one. We're just going to sing it in closing. We're just going to sing it sort of as a prayer. So I'll sing through... Go ahead and put the words up. I'll sing through, and it goes like this if you don't know it. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Boy, I hit a lot of clinkers in there, but you got the idea. Let's try it one more time together. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me Thy great salvation, so rich and free. Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of this service, Father, we come recognizing how great you are and how merciful you are, and how wonderful you are. But Father, above all that, we come recognizing that you are our shepherd and we shall not want that you make us to lie down in green pastures where you restore us, that you lead us beside the still waters where we can drink without fear from the richness of your word. You restore our soul. Father, thank you for being such a loving, caring, amazing shepherd. Father, as we leave this place today, let us go forward from this place with our spirits restored and with thankfulness on our lips as we praise your name for all that you are, not all that you've done. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just put some music on back there, guys.